the Jews and the Christians they say the child Ibrahim alayhi salam, the son Ibrahim alayhi salam took to sacrifice is not Ismail but it is Ishaq alayhi salam. Very very unfortunately, I have seen videos of very popular Muslim speakers of the USA who are very popular here and they come up with the explanation unfortunate part I don't know why deliberately they have done it or they did it unintentionally they are saying the Christians have an allegation which says in the Quran there is not a single ayat which says Allah's messenger Ibrahim alayhi salam took Ismail alayhi salam for sacrifice their challenge is there is not a single ayat in the Quran where Allah said Ismail alayhi salam shall be taken for sacrifice and Ibn Kasir rahimahullah and other Mufassirin, they point out something very important. They said, there were some Jews who reverted to Islam. When they reverted to Islam and became Sahaba, when it came to Ismail salams and Hajj incident, even after becoming Muslims, they were actually quoting what they used to believe when they were Jews. And that was something that was spoken commonly between some Sahaba, which Imam Tabari took it in his tafsir, and what Imam Tabari took in his tafsir cannot be authentic. It is because contradicting the Quran and the entire Sahaba and Muhammad himself. But there is something which is very important that I noticed after I came from India to the USA. And this, back in India, we never faced this so much. But now here, because we live in the midst of Jews and Christians and these people, they believe in Abraham, Isaac and the descendants of Isaac. So now it has become something which in this place as Muslims, we must compulsory know. Because the Jews and the Christians, they say the child Ibrahim salam, the son Ibrahim salam, took to sacrifice is not Ismail but it is Ishaq alayhi salam. They do not say it is Ismail alayhi salam. And very, very unfortunately, I have seen videos of very popular Muslim speakers of the USA who are very popular here. And they come up with the explanation. Unfortunate part, I don't know why. Deliberately they have done it or they did it unintentionally. They are saying that yes, there was a dispute in the Muslim community in the Salaf. In the Salaf means in the Sahaba, Tabain and the Tabi Tabain because many Sahaba and Tabain they thought it was Isaq alayhi salam. They say it's a dispute, Nauz Billah. And they then further say, some of them, well this is not a big issue, it's not something we need to debate about, it's not an issue of theology. See, it may not be an issue of theology, but of course it's an issue of creed. The creed of Islam is involved there. Why? The moment you doubt or you agree and say it is Ishaq alayhi salam, the Jews and the Christians are then going to tell you that that is what we are saying that Prophet Muhammad cannot be a prophet. It is not Ismail only because Ismail was born as an illegitimate son. Now, Usbillah is Zalik. Are we agreeing to that? Because they are saying Ismail alayhi salam is illegitimate. They are saying Hajar alayhi salam is not the wife. She was a concubine. She was a keep. Now, Zubillah. So, do we want to give a stick in their hand to beat our backs? This is not correct. And these Muslim speakers, popular on the social media, see, we are in a time where even if a donkey brays and you take a video and put it on the internet or if the dog is barking and you put that video on the internet, you get millions of viewers for it. I don't know how many of you know there are some videos on the internet which are totally blank for one hour, two hours and it has got millions of views. So social media is promoting both the good and the evil. In this time, you people have to be very careful when you are taking anything related to Islam. So this Muslim speaker, he says, he quotes Tabari, tafsir -e tabari He says, in tafsir -e tabari Imam Tabari, he said, that Umar ibn Khattab, Ali ibn Talib, they believed that it was Ishaq alayhi salam and it was not Ismail alayhi salam. Now you see, this is so misguiding for the common masses. This is so ridiculous and this is so dangerous. The people do not know the 
ilm of tafsir they do not know how the tafsirs are done they do not know how the mufassirin have collected the tafsir but just to let all of you know one thing acha they also say one thing because this is a christian allegation the christians have an allegation which says in the quran there is not a single ayat which says allah's messenger ibrahim alaihi salam took ismail alaihi salam for sacrifice their challenge is there is not a single ayat in the quran where allah said ismail alaihi salam shall be taken for sacrifice and there is no direct hadith of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which says ismail alaihi salam shall be taken for sacrifice it's a challenge from them but they forget to understand the quran will not speak anything as you want to hear as it pleases you your words that you want allah to speak allah is not going to speak that allah spoke something you need to make a research on it when you read surah safat surah number 37 ayat number 100 to ayat number 113 surah hijr surah number 15 ayat number 53 and surah hud surah number 11 ayat number 71 these are the three main places where allah spoke about the birth of the children or the sons of ibrahim alaihi salam when you read surah safat surah number 37 ayat number 100 please go back to your homes and open the translation easy reference surah 37 Remember the surah number. Surah number is thirty-seven. Ayat are very easy. Hundred to hundred and thirteen. Ayat number hundred. Ibrahim alayhi salam makes a dua. Ibrahim alayhi salam says, "Ya Allah, I need a progeny. I am very old. I need a child. I am desiring a child." Ayat number one hundred. For Bashar na ho bi gulam in Halim. Allah gave him the glad tidings of a forbearing son. Halim in Arabic translated into English forbearing. kind very patient very humble very soft hearted tabashsharna hu bi ghulam in halim and the next ayat says and when the son grew up abraham told to his son oh my son i have seen a dream in which i have been commanded to slaughter you and the son says oh my father do as allah commanded you you shall find me very submissive you shall find me a muslim to the command of allah and then abraham took him and put the forehead of his son on the rock so that he couldn't see the face and get emotional to follow or obey the command of allah and then he was substituted with a ram all this is given till ayat number 111 and ayat number 112 says and we gave ibrahim the glad tidings of ishaq alaihi salam is it not so clear about whom is allah speaking then after the whole incident of sacrifice is mentioned then allah says we gave him the glad tidings of ishaq alaihi salam so if they understand simple basic arabic the quran is very clear ibrahim alaihi salam had only two sons his first son is ismail alaihi salam testified even in the bible when you read book of genesis chapter number 16 verse number 15 it says abraham called his son ismail then when you read book of genesis chapter number 17 Verse number twenty-three, twenty-five, twenty-seven. Ismail is my son. Ismail is my son. Ismail is my son. From where did you get this? Ishaq alayhi salam. So, book of Genesis, chapter number twenty-two, verse number two. What does it say? And Abraham took his only son for sacrifice in the land of Moriah. See, this I am saying so that you people, if you come across, please talk to them. The book of Genesis, chapter twenty-two, verse number two, is the only reference they quote to say Ishaq alayhi salam. And what is the book? What is it saying? It says, "And he took his only son." But we know the Bible is confirming Ibrahim alayhi salam had two sons. Ishaq alayhi salam cannot be the only son. Then in the Quran they said it's not there. In the Quran, Allah said in Surah Hud, ayat number seventy-one, and we gave Ishaq the glad tidings to Sarah alayhi salam of Ishaq alayhi salam. and a son of ishaq alayhi salam by the name yaqub alayhi salam you understand my point if allah is saying i gave the glad tidings of ishaq and the son of ishaq who shall be yaqub what does it mean then this child will not be tried for sacrifice if already allah is mentioning that this son will have a son where is the exam then sara alayhi salam will know anyway he is going to live and will have a son so it has to be ismail alayhi salam then in the book of genesis as i said the only son he took and it is ishaq they say we all know ishaq alayhi salam was not the only son and the other important part there is it was called the land of moria the land of moria what is land of moria so 
it is nothing but marwa safa and marwa according to a hadith the beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam pointed out towards the mountain of marwa and he said this is where ibrahim did his sacrifice the prophet also showed to marwa now they don't agree to it but all the rabbis they said moria in the book of genesis when it occurs it refers to any generic mountains anywhere in the world but why did they not agree to it and fit it to where masjid aqsa is today because the rabbinical jews the the samaritan torah translated by the samaritan jews what they did in their explanation is they said according to second chronicles chapter number 3 verse number 1 it says david built a city on the mount of moria so where is that mount of moria where daud alaihi salam built it that is the place where masjid aqsa is today so they assume that because daud alaihi salam built the city there and it is holy therefore ibrahim alaihi salam must have also given the sacrifice there it must be isaac and not ismail alaihi salam it is an assumption but they need to again understand when we are commemorating the sacrifice every other thing related to hajj and every other ritual of hajj it is totally related with makkah al mukarrama and hajj alaihi salam suddenly why will isaac alaihi salam fit there it doesn't appear appear to the logic also but as muslims you need to understand and imam mujahid i am giving a name so that you remember imam mujahid was a mufassir of quran of the four earliest people who made tafsir of the quran imam mujahid stands on the topmost of them why because he was a direct student of ibn abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu who is ibn abbas he is the only sahabi who did the tafsir of the quran remember this the only sahabi who did complete tafsir of the quran is ibn abbas the prophet made a dua for him oh allah give him the faham of tafsir of the quran and he is the only mufassir of the quran among the sahabi and the best mufassir his direct student two students mujahid and ikrama of them mujahid most important the one whom ibn abbas radhiyallahu anhu loved the most and the tafsir done by imam mujahid imam mujahid he says I learned the tafsir of Quran from Ibn Abbas at least 30 times in my life. Can you imagine that? And Imam Mujahid he says all Sahaba they never said it was Isa Khalil Salam. Everyone believed it was Ismail Khalil Salam. And Ibn Kathir Rahimahullah and other Mufassirin they point out something very important. They said there were some Jews who reverted to Islam. When they reverted to Islam and became Sahaba. when it came to ismail alaihi salam and hajj incident even after becoming muslims they were actually quoting what they used to believe when they were jews and that was something that was spoken commonly between some sahaba which imam tabari took it in his tafsir and what imam tabari took in his tafsir cannot be authentic it is because contradicting the quran and the entire sahaba and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself allahu allah Allah